Let's all stand, turn to page 113, sing glory to his name. 113. Amen. Be seated. Uh, it is good to see everybody here tonight. I was looking around. I said, man, the crowd looks slim, but I guess they got 85 of them going to camp up there. Um, you want me to use this, Cliff? Yeah. Okay. All right. He's back there wanting me to use this. Um, but it is good to see y'all tonight. Thank you for coming out and supporting the Wednesday night Bible study tonight. Um, as far as announcements, I do remember all of them that's going to camp. I did get a chance to talk to Daddy just for a minute. Um, earlier today, he got a little bit of service, enough to call out for a minute, said everything was going good. Um, said tell everybody hello. He missed them. He loved them. The kids were doing great. All the adults were tired, and they were hoarse because they have been hollering and screaming at the kids all week. So uh, he said, do continue to pray for them, though. They are having a good time. I talked to him earlier, and he said, can you hear me? I said, yeah. I said, can you hear me? Yeah. I can't hear nothing. Can you hear me? I said, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I got you now. So evidently the service must be terrible down there uh, where they're at. He said, I'm, I got just a minute now. I'm standing on one leg, holding one arm up, standing on the edge of the roof trying to get service up here. So uh, <laughs> just find one spot up there. That's what he said. Uh, he was on the phone when I was talking to him. And uh, he said, hold on, hold on. I'm losing you. Hold on. I got Paige, got her phone up here beside me trying to get service out here. She's holding her phone right up to mine. He said, it's just this one spot is all you got. So, uh, but he said they was having a great time, though, um, and enjoying it. But as far as announcements, do remember Bible school, Vacation Bible School starts next week. Uh, be another busy week for everybody, no doubt. Uh, starts at 6.30 every night, so the ones that's working with that, uh, make sure you're here to help out as much as you can. Uh, and then remember the service, I believe it's on the 29th, when uh, Brother Mark's going to be speaking 
uh, that night at the church began. Uh, kind of with Ken Dad be supportive of that. Uh, as far as any other announcements, I know there's a bunch of them on the board there. Yeah, um, that is July, I mean, June the 30th or 31st, 31st, okay, uh, that we're going to the Durham Rescue Mission. It's a Tuesday, yeah, um, that's right, it'll be the 31st because he's doing his the 29th, so it'll be the 31st, uh, we're going to the Durham Rescue Mission, leaving church at 5.30, all right, so all the choir that can go and help out that night, huh, July. I'm trying to back the year up, so I'm flying by. July 31st, then we'll do that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. You remember that sitting back there? You said it's in the vestibule right there. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, all right, right there at the window then. You can stop by and sign that then if you get a chance. Um, as far as any other announcements, I don't, I don't know of anything else off the top of my head, not unless anybody else does. Prayer requests. Go ahead, Ms. Raven, you got a prayer request? How's Brother Johnny doing? He doing good? Still not doing good? Okay. Still remember him. Yes, sir. camp um, we pray God to touch their hearts um, more than anything um, and if there is some whether it be from this church or any other church around and if they're lost that they'll realize they need for a savior uh, that would be I don't uh, I don't know yeah I'm not sure um, I, said, I, I talked to Debbie just for 
a couple minutes with Xavier, and, and really the service was in and out. I was trying to listen, holler back at him so he could hear me. So <laughs> he'll probably get me when he gets back for hollering at him, but that's the only way I could get him to hear me. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 So I'm going to go travel back on Friday. Is Paige coming back tomorrow? She's got to come back tomorrow? She's on assignment. Okay. She leaves early tomorrow. Okay. I know she's got to leave early to get back to work, too. Um, she doesn't have a chance with that. So, anybody else? All right. If not, we'll get a cup. Daniel, you and Jaden come help me tonight. Take our bus offering. We'll get these two young fellas. Take our bus offering for us tonight. Nice looking fellas, all dressed up sharp. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we'll remember all these prayer requests uh, tonight. Brother Danny, will you take us to the Lord in prayer tonight? Amen. Let's stand and turn to page 285. Sing the Lily of the Valley. 285. Mike missed his um, five-minute message the other week when we was doing five-minute messages when me and Blake and Cliff was up here doing it. So we're going to let him come do his five-minute message tonight. <laughs> All right. I think that's what I've got to you. Just a five-minute message. find my places here, see what I'm going to do here. If you would, turn your Bibles to Romans 12.
Verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I'll try to give you a message tonight on four words. Body, living, sacrifice, and holy. We're going to take the first word, body. Let's talk about it just a little bit. The body. Everybody's got a body. Body's got many, many members to it. Hands, legs, feet, my mouth that I'm using to preach to you tonight. We get caught up in our world when we're lost and we want to try to fulfill the desires of the body. But once we're born again, we're bought with a price, that's the blood of Jesus Christ. This body belongs to Christ. So if it belongs to Christ, we've got to have different desires. We've got to have a desire to satisfy Christ. We've got to use this body to satisfy Christ. If we're going to satisfy Christ, can we live the way we've been living? Or has we got to live a spiritual life? How are we going to live a spiritual life if we don't know how to live a spiritual life? You've got to get in the Word of God. You've got to know how Christ wants you to live. He wants us to use our mouthpiece to tell others about Christ. He wants us to use our legs. What can our legs do? Our legs can carry the gospel out to reach others. We can use our hands to reach out and help someone. Just give them a helping hand. We can use our mouth not just for preaching, not just for witnessing sometimes, but just telling them about our own salvation. Just tell them about our own salvation. Just tell them about our own salvation. That's, that's so many times we, we, we want to witness someone, we don't know what to say. I was like it for years and years and years, and sometimes I still get like it. I'm just looking for that little edge just to say something about the Lord. Sometimes you get around people, they can out-talk me. I can't get a word in their ways. But I'll finally slip something in. I'll mention the Lord some way, somehow. And if I can get it in there just a little bit, if he'll pause just for a split second, and then I can get something in there. But if you listen to him long enough, and that's another thing I hear, we need to listen to him. If we listen to him long enough, he's going to start telling you about himself. Everybody has got problems. They're either going to brag or they're going to whine and cry. Most of the time, they're going to whine and cry. If you tell them how bad off you is, he's going to tell you how good he is. But if you just listen, just listen to him, he'll start whining and crying. Someone's done, done him wrong. Or everything is down. He ain't got no money. He can't do this. He can't do that. First thing we do, we want to judge him. Because he's going to go to telling us. First thing you want to do, you want to ask him, is he saved? Is he born again? Oh, yeah, everybody come upon a day. They say they're born again. So then the Christian wants to judge him. We ain't his judge. He just needs an ear to pour his guts out to. Sometimes he just needs someone to listen to him. Then what are we supposed to do? Can we help him? Oh, yeah, we can help him. We can help him. What about our knees? What about our knees? We can get right down on our knees right then and there. So look, I can see right now you need help. I know someone that can help you. That's God Almighty. I can carry you right to the throne right now. That's what we need to do. Let God do the judging on his life. It ain't up to us to do the judging for him. I've listened to preachers and said, well, I'm going to judge him by this book. I can look at his life and see whether or not he's living by this book, but I can't see his heart. Only God can see his heart. So why am I going to judge the outward appearance of him? 
It ain't up to me to judge him. I can't punish him. I can't do anything to him. The only thing I can do is put my mouth on him and bad mouth him. And then God is going to judge me for that. So I'm better off to pray with him and pray for him. Help give him a hand if he needs it. Try to share the gospel with him with this body. That's the body that Lord give me to use for him. That's what I am to do. Our heart, our heart, our heart should pour out, should pour out to every soul out there, saved or lost. Why should it be out for the saved? They get in a battle. They get so low. I've been so low at times, I couldn't see no daylight. I couldn't see no daylight. What if you was in Walmart? I'm going to just use this as an example. What if you was in Walmart and you was coming in the door and you met this gentleman going out and he had a bag. He had an already got his and was paying for it. Brother Harvey just happened to know him. Didn't know him that well, but he'd seen him around at the store, but he knew him. Brother Harvey said, hey, here, how you doing? Having a good day? No. Just look like the whole world's on me. Most of us going to keep right on walk because we don't want to hear a problem. But that spiritual man, if you've been in your Bible and you're going to get close to God, that spiritual man, he's going to knock on your heart's door. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong. This man is serious. He's really serious. He's got a problem. He's got a problem. Say, hey, uh, uh. What's, what's going on? You, you, you having bad times? What's wrong with that? You having bad times? If he wants to let you know, he will tell you. He may be in a tunnel, and he cannot see no light whatsoever. He may have the bullets in that bag right there, he's planning on going home and put it in a gun and put it to his head. But if that Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit speaks to you, you speak back. It may be your opportunity to save that man's soul. You can't do it. But this body, this mouth, your actions says, look, I don't know what you're going through. I don't care what you're going through. It seems like you got a lot of darkness on your life. Let me pray. Let me pray for you right now. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to get down on that knee. Not in, not in the middle of Walmart. If God told you to get down on your knees, why wouldn't you? Are you ashamed of it? Is any of us ashamed of our Christ? What did he do? Look what they done to him. They stripped him and hung him on the cross. And we're going to be ashamed to get down on our knees right there to pray for a brother that may go home and blow his brains out and he may be lost and may be burning in hell. What's wrong with us? doing a little bit of suffering. What's wrong with a little bit of persecution? So what if someone walks by and points their finger at you? So what? Women walk by and say, hmm, look at it. Hmm, hmm. What's, hmm. I don't believe in that. There's a church house for that. I don't care. Praise God. Let them say that. Praise God. I take that kind of persecution. It don't matter. It don't matter. But We've got this body. We have to do something with it other than just our desires. What about if you had a ball game? I thought about it. I was hoping Jimmy, Jimmy Carl was going to be here tonight, but he ain't here. But I'm going to use him anyway, even though he ain't here. <laughs> what if he's over there getting ready to go up to bat? And his brother's standing over here beside him. He's getting ready. Jimmy's getting ready to walk out here because he's going to be the next brother in just a minute. This other fellow is already up here betting, so he ain't stepped out of the bullpen yet. So he's standing there, fellow said, man, says, everything in my life is going wrong. My wife, she's upset with me. My kids, they hate me. And Jimmy thinks about one thing. Getting right down that diamond right there, getting on home plate and knocking that ball over the fence back there. 
This man here is pouring out his guts to him. Pouring his guts out. He feels like his life is over with. Now, Jimmy's supposed to be a Christian man. Oh, he might not be Jimmy. It might be Brother Mike here. He's supposed to be a Christian man. You got an ear? Why ain't you listening? You got a mouth you need to be prayed for? Won't be wrong if he stepped out there, getting ready to go to home plate to bet. Holler, time out, time out. Y'all fellas, come on in here. We got a bigger problem here in this ball game. We need to pray, pray for this brother right here. He's hurting. He's in a dark place right now. He can't see light. We need to pray for him. Do you think the ones that are sitting up on them bleachers all around there looking at that, what do you think they're going to do? Oh, we ain't never seen it. That's some new life people down there. And they, they praying for that boy. They down on their knee. And they call time out. What greater thing did that would be? Just something. Just at a simple ball game. Brother is hurting. He needs prayer. But yet, and Jimmy, don't pray for him. He walks right on up out the home plate. He rides back. He's getting ready to hit that ball. He said, Lord, please, please, let me knock it over the fence. And the Holy Spirit didn't talk. You need to get on your knees and pray for him about that. Why do you think the Holy Spirit is going to listen to him right here and he's up there and going to knock that ball over the fence back there? He ain't. What kind of a person would ask God to do something for him when a brother back here is hurting this bad and you won't even pay attention to it. You won't even pay attention to it. That's just an example. I've run upon many examples in my life. This message was preached to me before I come here. Many, many times. It wasn't brung down into this, to a message form like this. But it comes home to you. We have to examine ourselves on all of this have to examine ourselves. Let's move on to the next word, living, living. Let's talk about living for a little bit. What does it mean to live for God? Take yourself out of the equation and just live for God. What are we going to do so we can live for God? Each and every day of our life, we're going to live for God. That means you're going to get up in the morning. You've got to have the Lord on your mind. The best way to start that, I got on a conviction with other preachers preaching, asked the question, did you read the Bible every day? Well, back then, I didn't know how to read. But I had it on, well, I started off with a little cassette tape. Ain't no young people, real young in here tonight. They, all of them know what cassette tape is. But some of them some young ones that's going on camp, they don't even know what a cassette tape is, more or less an eight track. But I wore out two sets of those, listening to the Bible. And then I got the CD, and I wore out a set and one or two this on it, listening to it before I ever learned how to read it. But I still wasn't under conviction. I listened to one CD over and over. I was listening to it for a solid week if I was in my truck. Over and over and over. I should maybe quote it from one end to the other and don't know nothing. Don't know nothing. But I still didn't read. <coughs> we, my wife and I, we were at McGee's Mill Church we took a, a class over there. It took us, well, I think it was three years to go through the whole Bible. That's when it started me to reading it a little bit. She would help me. She'd get so mad with me. She'd get so mad with me, and I'd get mad with her because she'd tell me this word on this line. Five words over, back over in the line under it, I'd have forgot the word. She could tell me all over again. Before I get to the next line, that same word, then I get, I just told you, I told you twice. But yet, I didn't forget it. I didn't know it. Didn't know it. If when you don't know, you just don't know. She'd get mad. I don't understand. 
but to do it over and over and over and over again until you get in a routine to read your Bible. Set your time every morning or every evening to read your Bible. Set your time to pray. Set your time to pray for people because we've got a long prayer list back there. You've got to eat, sleep, and talk Christ 24-7. 24-7. All the other stuff you talk about, if it's nothing but bull, it means nothing. Sometimes, Mike, he's in his own business, I'm in my own business, we have to ask our help and tell them what to do. But our pastime, that's what I'm trying to get you to say, your pastime, talk about Christ. Talk about Christ. If you go to a store, I hope to someday be able to retire, and I hope to be able to go to a store and sit down and, and fi- try to figure out what they're talking about around these stores. I see five or six men sitting around talking and carrying on. Sometimes they're laughing. Sometimes they're shaking their head. I mean, it's, and I said, I just wonder just what they're talking about. Because I'll be in there, back when I used to drink drinks, I'd go in to get me a drink, and I'm looking, I said, what in the world are they talking about? I said, every time I come by here, the truck is here, and they're sitting in here. I said, I wonder if I ever get to do this. But I like to go in there just past time and tell them about the Lord. Tell them about what I know about the Lord. And ask them what they're saved. We've got to live. We've got to live Christ. We've got to live Him. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to get, about, get out of our old ways. What does it mean to live for Christ? I wrote that in my notes. Jesus said, Jesus said, this is the very reason that he came to earth. The very reason he came to earth. He came that we have life and have it more abundantly. If you turn to John 10, 10, We'll read the scripture. <clears throat> John 10, 10. The, the thief came not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Christ said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. See, until we born again, we don't have no life. Believe it or not, you have no life. You're living in darkness and you don't even realize you're in darkness. But once you're born again, you've got life. You've got something to live for each and every day of your life. You've got something to live for. You've got a Savior. He died on the cross. He shed his blood for us, each and every one of us. He suffered there. Why can't we just suffer just a little bit, just a little bit for Christ's sake? What's a little bit of suffering? What about getting down on your knees in Walmart, stopping in the middle of a ball game, calling time out to pray for someone that needs prayer? It could be a kid. It could be a mama sitting up on a bench. You don't never know. Don't stop praying for them. Don't stop praying for them. If that Holy Spirit tugs on you right then and there, do it. And I'm going to tell you why. If you don't, well, I've done it myself. I'd be walking by someone in Walmart or coming out of a store. Know where I'm going to church. I say, how you doing? All right, pray for me. Invite him to church. Pray for me. I said, okay. I didn't mean to lie to him. Get in my truck. No sooner I get in, I get a phone call. You know how that is. Get off of that, and you got to call another to tell this one that. Before you get off of that, the phone is already ringing. I done forgot all about who I even saw at the store, and I ain't prayed for him. I think about it two weeks later. If I'd have stopped right then and prayed when the Holy Spirit was telling me to, he would have been prayed for. 
I would have been aware of what he needed. But yet, God convicted me over that. God convicted me over it. We don't want to live like a thief. We want to live like Christ. 19 through 21. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation. Supply of the Holy of the Spirit. I want to. I just want to use the word Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. The supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ through our, through your prayers, through my prayers. Through, we need to be praying for them. Why? The supply of the Holy Spirit. Why do we need to stop pray for them? That's the Holy Spirit tugging on us right then. But that flesh, he wants to keep walking. It's thinking about what it needs to do next. Most of us got a one-track mind. Can't think about four things at one time. Me and Brother White, we have to. <laughs> Sometimes it's 20 things at one time. And then we'll forget most time the one most important, like falling down on our knees and praying for that young man. That should be the most important thing in our life. But yet, we've got other things. <clears throat> according to Philippians 20 according to my I can't even remember that word earnestness expectations and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness in my body whether it be by life or by death. We come back up here that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Nothing. In nothing I shall not be ashamed. That's what we fail Christ. Why I fail Christ. We say we're not ashamed, but yet we won't do what Christ tells us to do. He tells us, if you love me, keep my commandments. I mean, he don't give you no option. He don't say if you do a little bit of this or a little bit of that. If you love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say one commandment. He said them all. 21, verse 21, Philippians 21. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So when we live is Christ, Christ, he was, he come here to help everybody he possibly could. He set the example for every one of us to live by. I can't live by Brother Harvey. I can't live by Brother Cole. Brother Cliff. Brother Ronnie. Don't do me no good to line up with them. They be, may be living better than me. I may be living just a little bit worse. But if I'm to live like I'm supposed to, i got to live like Christ. He lives in me. He lives in me. This is his body. Why? How did it become his body? I gave it to him. If I gave it to him, I'm not supposed to have control over it. But yet we want to control this body ourselves. We want to use it the way we want to use it. We want to go where we want to go. It's not ours to go with. It's Christ. I'm gladly to give it to Christ. Because it's getting older by the day. It's getting more wrinkly by the day. 
But the soul, that breath of air that he breathed in me to make me a living soul, it's going to continue to live. I'm going to live eternally. I'm not going to die. When I close my eyes in this body, I'm going to be lifted. I'm going to be in heaven. I'm going to be in heaven. If you're born again, you're going to be in heaven. What's going to help you get there? Well, uh, I profess Christ. If you profess Christ, he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But yet you're not keeping his commandments. Well, I, I'm trying. I'm trying. Have you not got any conviction of no, nothing I've said tonight? If you didn't, if you're doing everything, you're good. But I just don't believe it. I just don't believe it. I don't believe you're doing everything because I know I'm not doing everything. I'm trying, and I'm getting better at it. Christ is still working on me. He's still molding me and making me, forming me and shaping me. Am I getting smarter? No, but I'm getting wiser. I'm getting wiser. I ain't getting no smarter, but I'm getting wiser. All on account of Christ. Proverbs 8.20. A faithful man will abound with blessings. I like this one. But whoever hasteth to be rich will not go un... That falls right back at home with us, brother. So many times we hasted to be rich. And I learned, because I'm a lot older than you, I learned many years ago, if you do it honestly, you ain't going to be rich. You ain't going to be rich. You're going to make a living. <laughs> Whether you do it for yourself or do it for somebody else, that's all you're going to do is make a living if you do it honestly. But I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. What I hate about it and what I really hate about it today, I don't have enough time for the Lord. The business takes too much of my time. If you've got something that's taking time away from the Lord, it needs to be gone. And that's the way I look at my business. It needs to be gone. I, need, I got to get out of it. Why? I love serving God. And I need to serve God. Preacher, he needs help. I don't want to take his place. Oh, Lord, no, I don't want to take his place. Don't matter what you think. God called me. He ain't got much to work with here. But I'll make it available. I'll make it available. Let's move on. We got it. We ain't got 15 more minutes. We got two more words. <laughs> Let's go to sacrifice. What do we sacrifice? What do we sacrifice? Is it our cause? Is it our houses? <clears throat> this hit home with me, the one on the car. <coughs> Always kept a fairly new car. And uh, going to church one time, and the preacher asked, will you stop pick up such such family? I said, yeah. And didn't mind it a bit. Well, Stopped, picked them up, and hit two or three little kids. Wife drove the other vehicle because one of the parents was going where the uh, daddy was, and so he stayed in the front seat, and the kid got in the back. And I just hate it when a kid gets in the back seat and then puts that feet against your seat and push it again. That just burns me up because your feet goes on the floorboard, and that's where I want them at. And I got to practice a brand-new car. I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. Needless to say, I had to pray to the Lord to forgive me. Not then, but when I got to church, they got out. I got out and opened the back door for me for me to get out. And I look up on my seat. Feet went all over. Because when I pulled up in the yard, they was out there in the yard just playing. All down in that dirt. I mean, my car was 
I'm all down. It was clean. I like to keep my vehicle clean back then. It don't matter too much now. But <laughs> One on any church, and the preacher got to preaching. What are you sacrificing? And I said, well, I didn't sacrifice you. I didn't sacrifice my new car, and it's nasty. <laughs> and uh, that's what I'm thinking to myself, you know. But then he hits home. What's one soul worth? So what? I mean, it just looked like he would read my mind. So what? A little kid put a little dirt in there. God gave you that car. He can take it away. And I said to myself, he didn't read my mind. I said, I ain't said nothing to nobody. How in the world he know that? He didn't know it. He probably didn't even have it in his notes. But the Holy Spirit knew what was in my heart at the time. He had him to say it. He had him to say it just for me. I ain't never said nothing else again about that. Ain't never said If I pull it and the man grieves it, now even my work truck, I got a box of plastic seat covers in one of the tow boxes. If I land on the ground and get grease all over me, I pull out one and I cover my seat. The seats in my old truck, just as black as black as my shoes <laughs> because I've never done it. The one I got now, I try to keep it clean as long as I can. Matter of fact, the loader that I run is five years old. It's still got the plastic on the rubber flow mat in the flow boat. Just took this plastic off the seat last year. Everybody got in. Ah, it makes you sweat. I said, keep my seat as new as long as we can. And finally got ragged in, and I took the flash out. You ain't that bad, are you? I mean, take care of it. God give it to you, take care of it. <laughs> that's, just, that's just me. But use it for the Lord. Everything we got, it should be God's. Even at home. And I never really heard about people letting missionaries and, and different ones come into the home and stay until I come to this church. But Brother Mike, he opens his house up. Preacher coming to preach at church, he opens his house up there. Give him a key, tell him where the key is at, tell him to go and come. If he need a car, he give him a car. He's got one day. That's the way we should be. That's the way we should be. We should be that trustworthy. We should. If you can't trust church folks, who can you trust? I mean, I suppose they to trust Brother Ryan. I suppose they to trust him with my life. Okay, I, I suppose they to trust him with my life. And I suppose they to trust you with my life. Can I? Okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I mean, we're supposed to be able to trust one another. And we're supposed to love one another. Not just love one another. Love one another as we would love ourselves. As we would love ourselves. If you need help, any way I can help you, I will help you. What about our money? Do you sacrifice money? Now, if you own disability, you get a certain amount. If you own Social Security, you get a certain amount. If you work a 40-hour-a-week job, you get a certain, certain amount. Well, a certain percentage of it is tithe. That's not sacrifice. That's not sacrifice. The sacrifice coming in when you give that special offering. For example, I thought about this. I was thinking about Cliff. He was helping me today. I think that's the reason the Lord bring it up on my mind. Say you've been saving money. You've got about $5,000 saved up in a little kitty. It's just money that you're going to try to go on vacation with or it's extra money that's in case appliances break down so you never know if washer dryer go out or fridge down, car break down, transmission, fall out of it or something, and it's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars. What about brother come in here? He's been messed up. He's about to be kicked out of the house. 
Who wants the hind on the pastor? He needs a thousand dollars. You've got five. Nobody else in the church has got no money to take up office, take up less than fifty dollars. This man needs a thousand dollars. You got it. You know you got it. Nobody else in the church knows you got it. But you've got it. You don't get it. You don't get it. You get up, plate comes by, you throw a couple bucks in and go on. You, you're all right. Next week, washer goes out, call the appliance man or call Brother Cliff or wife. He fixes it. Go to fixing it. He says it ain't worth fixing. You might want to junk it, throw it away. It's going to cost you more to fix than what a brand new is going to cost. Man, can't you fix it? It's going to cost you probably $800. And the thing is still it's, it's 15 years old. You never get your money out of it. So, my what's junk? So you go get you a new one. Well, a new one, man, it's going to cost me $1,000. Before you get it home, your wife called. Well, you might as well get the other one to go with it because this didn't stop too. <laughs> it's a different color anyhow. We want matching color. You know you want wash and dry with matching colors. You can't have two different colors. <laughs> look at that. I see it. Look at the brother off right there. <laughs> you end up, you spend two thousand dollars getting your appliances back in your house. Go to work two days later, your car ain't pulling right. What the world's wrong with this car? Carry it to the shop. They will transmit shop. Two grand for the transmission there. Well, out of the five thousand, you didn't spend four. You got a thousand left. And you get to thinking about that thing. You get to thinking about it. I wonder if I'd have gave that thousand. Well, I'd have been broke now. But on the other hand, if God would have looked at that. What did he say? What was that verse of scripture? That he would bless you. That he would bless you. You'd have gave that $1,000, that washer or that dryer, probably when it went out, transmission when it went out. You'd have been missing a $1,000, but you still have 4000 But you didn't give. You didn't sacrifice. So God took the 4000 and left you with the 1000 that's the way God works. That's the way he works. If you ain't figured it out yet, test him. Test him. He'll show you. You can't prove him wrong. You cannot prove him wrong. He'll open the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. There's not room enough to receive. That's what the Word of God says. Y'all call the Word of God a lie? I don't. It's true. It's true. So sacrifice. That's getting a little deeper. That's getting into your personal money that you just stash back for other needs. <clears throat> John 15, 13. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Greater love. The man wanted that thousand dollars. You wouldn't give him that. So I know you ain't gonna lay down your life for him. So if you ain't gonna lay down your life for him, and I didn't ask three of you out here, did you give your life and protect me? They said yeah. Now I'm gonna ask all of you, would you give your life to protect me? I didn't get no answer on that. Y'all hasted too long, so I know what the answer to that was. It was supposed to be, yeah, amen. Didn't get that. Didn't get that. <laughs> what if God said? What if God said? Now, he did say this. Take thy son and offer him offering the sacrifice of righteousness. What if God said that to one of us?
Take thy son and offer a sacrifice of righteousness. That's sacrifice. And the man he said it to, did he back up? No, he didn't. If you want to look it up, it's in Genesis 2, 22, 2. <clears throat> in Psalms, take, let me see, I better jump, let's, let's go to, Let's go to the other one. Take no thought for your life. Matthew 6, 25. He that lose his life for my sake shall find it. He that lose his life for my sake shall find it. What's the scripture here? I will follow thee whatsoever thou goest, wheresoever thou goest. Luke 9, 57. Worthy to sacrifice. Worthy to suffer shame for his name. Who is worthy to suffer shame for his name? Be loved. Save one another. Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example. That's in First Peter two twenty one. Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Not the whole world, just part of it. So when I was telling you, we need to line up with Christ. Christ set the example for every one of us to live by. We can't point our fingers at nobody else how bad they're doing or how good they're doing. We just need to look at our life and try to live it for Christ. That, is, that should be our goal throughout our life. We went through three of the words. We don't have one left. And we got two minutes to catch that one word. Holy. Holy. So if you're going to live, he tell us to present your body as a living sacrifice. We didn't talk about that body. We're living in a sacrifice. Now we got the word holy. There's now one of us in here holy. I said, the only holiness we've got through the bloodshed of Jesus Christ that covers our sin because on our best day this wicked body is nothing but filthy rags. But with that blood cover, once you're born again, once you give yourself to Jesus Christ, that blood cover, that makes us holy. It makes us righteous. Before that, and we are nothing. We are nothing. So with the blood of Jesus Christ, that makes us holy. Praise God. If you're not born again, I feel for you. I ask you to come see me or come see the preacher. We'll pray for you. We'll show you how to be saved. But there's so many people that come to the altar and they'll cry out to God to be saved and they'll ask the Lord to come into their heart and they'll get up and go right back out the door to the exact same life. When you go back to the same life, they profess Christ. Christ knocked on their heart's door. He came in. But you pushed him back out. If didn't nothing transform in your body, if you're still conformed to the world, you're not born again. You've got to be transformed into a new creature. That old life, that's past. That's past. All things become new in your life once you're born again. You don't want to go back to that sin nature. You don't want to live in darkness all the time. You want to live in the light with Jesus Christ. And once you live in the light with Jesus Christ, oh, you can't help from serving him. You can't help from wanting to tell people about him. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ,
you, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to get up here and speak tonight, Lord. I pray and hope, dear God, that someone got something out of this message, Lord. It's not my message, Lord. It's yours. I thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to be up here. I ask you, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, convict hearts. May they examine ourselves. May they look at Christ, Lord, that set an example for us, Lord. Help us, dear God. In Jesus' name I pray.